has been three decades since the HIV virus was first identified. Mm -hmm. Despite years of research and progress in AIDS prevention, the disease remains a major challenge in Africa. To give us a sense of where the continent stands in fighting AIDS, I spoke with Dr. Peter Lepti, President of Public Health Programs with the Global Development Organization, FHI 360. Initially, 90% of people didn't know they were infected. Now that proportion is much lower. Uh, the services are level available, even at the community level, uh, uh, to test people. Treatment is uh, more widely available in countries such as Namibia, Rwanda, and uh, Botswana. Up to 80% of people who need treatment are getting it. Okay, so that's huge. Prevention, we've succeeded in cutting back the number of new infections by about 20, 25%, but that's still a challenge, and a challenge in terms of getting people to change their behavior and also to make sure that when people uh, get infected, uh, they, they are tested uh, and provided uh, counseling and other assistance as, as early as possible. Let's talk about the vulnerable population, women and children. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us? There are actually several vulnerable populations uh, that i like to discuss. Uh, one is the group that is most at risk of getting HIV because they are the ones who, once they get infected, spread it to the general population. Uh, sex workers, because of their frequency and their exposure. They include men who have sex with, with men. They include IV uh, drug users. So that's one group. The second group uh, are adolescents, the youth especially, uh, women and children. Children, there has been a remarkable improvement in uh, prevention of mother-to-child transmission. One area where we haven't done too well is preventing women from getting infected. Um, the worst scenario is probably in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, where the prevalence of HIV in antenatal women can rise from around 9% to about 45-46% uh, 46 by the time the woman is, is 30 or in the mid-reported uh, years. What can you tell us uh, over the years? How, the, how has it evolved? I think we make remarkable strides. Uh, we need to do a better job of reaching uh, the vulnerable populations, uh, those are, are most at risk, women or children in, this, in these populations. And there are new technologies that uh, will help us do this better. One of them is the, the use of microbicides. Uh, and recent studies that uh, FHI3CC has been involved in in South Africa with the CAPRISA study uh, show that microbicides uh, that contain antiretroviral drugs, so it's called uh, tenofovir, can prevent up to about 40% of infections in, in women if they use it just before sex and after sex. The second uh, drug is, uh, also prevents the same transmission uh, orally when, uh, in men who have sex with men. Okay. There is still work that is going on to see whether the same oral therapy will also work in the general population, but the, the research is not done yet. But the next frontier is actually what we call treatment for prevention. That if you put enough people who have HIV early enough on treatment, the studies have shown that we can reduce the transmission rate by as much as over 90%. The problem, though, is reaching people early, um, putting them on treatment, sustaining the program, and making sure they also adhere to the treatments. What would you say is the future in terms of uh, the fight against HIV? Yes, we are, we are opti optimistic, uh, given the, the first 20 years was a challenge in terms of funding, in terms of making progress, but the last 10 years has been remarkable in terms of the availability of funding and the populations that we're able to reach. The first challenge is to be able to maintain the funding or increase it to, uh, and there are two challenges. One is uh, uh, reaching enough people to be able to prevent new infections. For every person that we put on treatment, there are two new ones that have been infected. So we have to maintain the momentum. The second is new technologies to enhance our prevention effort. The third will be uh, enough resources uh, and enough programs to reach people with, with treatment. The fourth challenge will be if we succeed in putting virtually everybody or most people who need treatment on treatment, we have to make sure that once we save them, 
they don't die from hypertension, they don't die from diabetes, they don't die from stroke, or any other conditions that are, uh, that are existent in the country. So that would be the challenge. It would not make sense to spend $300 on saving one person from HIV for them to die of a disease that would have cost $10, $15 to treat. Well, thank you so much, Lino. Sure. Really comprehensive analysis there. Thanks. Of course, uh, Lino Madu, Lino Madu uh, In Focus health reporter, joins us every Tuesday and Thursdays right here on In Focus with the latest health news.